Let's talk The Fablemans. The Fablemans, directed by Steven Spielberg, is a loosely autobiographical coming-of-age film based around the fictional Sammy Fableman, a Jewish kid who moves around as a kid and develops a keen affinity for filmmaking in the 1960s. His developing prowess plays off a complicated family dynamic as he grows into a young man. Once again, nailed the synopsis. No one does it like me. This is a 91% on Rotten Tomatoes, has an 82 audience score. It's a long movie. Sure Two is. hours and 31 minutes. First, before we get into whether we liked it, did that get to you at all? The length of this movie? Yeah, so it's it was sort of like my biggest aversion to, uh, to seeing it before I saw it. Uh, it's just kind of overwhelming. Um, and... I, I I thought that it would probably be good considering everybody involved, but it also from the trailers seemed very um, I don't what do you want to call it like Oscars baity? Oh yeah. So I had like I had preconceived aversions to it, and the the runtime was one of them. This is a Steven Spielberg love letter to Steven Spielberg, mm -hmm. so that would for sure be Oscars. Beatty. It stars Michelle Williams, Paul Dano, Seth Rogen, Gabriel LaBelle in the lead as a young Sammy Fableman, uh, Jeannie Berlin, the great Amazing. Julia Butters. Yeah. Amazing in this movie. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the always great Julia Butters, Judd Hirsch, speaking of amazing in this movie. Really, among others, I loved the cast in this movie. There, there was nary a bad performance. Really kind of as always of late, blown away by Michelle Williams. This is definitely going to be uh, Best Supporting Actress nominee material. I love this movie. I thought this movie was awesome. I'll shoot my wad and say four and a half on Letterboxd. Mm -hmm. Like, really, really loved this movie. It's four and a half for me, too. Uh, I, I really, really, really liked it. I don't know if I'm willing to say that, like, I loved it, but it was... An awesome experience and like just a really well done movie front to back The even the runtime two hours, 31 minutes. I, I would have taken more. I yeah. legitimately would have taken more. And when it ended, I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. Like it, it is fully like enthralling start to finish this. Obviously, every year there's a great coming of age film, whether it's boyhood uh, uh, Lady Bird, mid '90s. I mean, Call Me by Your Name is coming of age ish. I mean, so so many uh, licorice pizza last year. This is this year's like de definitive coming of age film, and I think the kid uh, Gabriel Labelle was awesome was in great. it, especially yeah. in like his high school years. He was. It was a little distracting. I've I've said it when we watched Dawson's Creek. That like, okay, we get it. Joshua Jackson, you've seen George Clooney act and you're trying to be like George Clooney. There were points in this movie where I was like, yeah, buddy, you've seen Andrew Garfield. <laughs> he, But I mean, if you can do the Andrew Garfield thing. Then... I thought you were going to say like, like, yeah, buddy, we get it. Like you're young Steven Spielberg. Oh, because no. there, there was elements to that, too, for me, where it was like, all right, this kid. All right, we get it. Like this kid like r is really into directing. But like it, it obviously is part of the story, and there are a lot of reasons why you would maybe think that you would be annoyed by this movie, and one of them being, you know, it being Steven Spielberg's love letter to himself, as you mentioned. But it's all the characters are are pretty likable. Like it's it even for a love letter, it's not obnoxious. It's not like super self indulgent. It's it really lends itself to a good story. The, the character of Mitzi, played by Michelle Williams, is just incredible. And she's so good in it. I, I don't... You know I don't like the word underrated because it's usually placed on very, very successful and, like, well-compensated and awarded people. But somehow I feel like Michelle Williams is underrated. She's great in all these... I mean, speaking of coming-of-age uh, films, Manchester by the Sea incredible in that i would say underrated to the general public yeah like if, if, if you ask the general public most of them are not going to say M michelle williams is like one of the best actresses in hollywood right and but if she you ask for sure is. if you ask movie people they yeah. will say michelle williams she's so 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 good in this 
Paul Dano is great in this. Paul Dano, who is a candidate for this year's Michael Stuhlbarg slash Octavia Spencer Award, is someone who is good in multiple things this year. He, like a lot of people who are up for that award this year, was also in The Batman. Colin Farrell's yes. going to be coming for that ass as well. Uh, Barry Keoghan's going to be coming for that ass. Although, can we give it to Barry Keoghan when he was in like one second of The Batman? <laughs> is, you, that you're, is that a joke? Right? He's only in it yeah, for a second, he, right? He's like barely in it. You can barely see him. He's, I mean... He's in the shadows. He's spo- may contain the Batman spoiler. Uh, he's Joker. the Joker, yeah, right? Correct, yeah. So it'd be tough to give it to him. Yeah. But man, I want to give that kid so many awards yeah. for Banshees. Anyway. I, uh, um, I, I, I think it's interesting. Like Paul Dano, I've always thought that Paul Dano was pretty good. We're reaching a point where Paul Dano is maybe like the most versatile actor in Hollywood because this year he played like what I, what I interpreted as young Riddler, Mm -hmm. like a young Riddler, a young man. Yeah. And now in the Fablemans, he plays like an old dad. Yeah. And he's 38 years old. He plays a guy in this movie who I would interpret as being like, 40s yeah maybe 50 at some point like and he nails it he 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 comes off as like an old guy but he can also play a young guy like it, it's wild where he is in his career where he can do both things there's also something about the character in his face that just yeah for right some it's reason, round is very 60s yeah 100 you know? it's why i think it's why he was good in uh love and mercy the brian wilson movie like even though he doesn't really look like brian wilson it was he. He was just more convincingly sixties than anybody else. The other people looked like they were in costume. Well, he he does seem to have like an old soul. Yeah, and he's always seemed that way. So it's not that surprising that he would be like a sort of like a time capsule of a human. <laughs> uh, can we talk about Julia Butters for a minute? Yes, because she doesn't have a huge role in this movie, but she has one scene after a major family event where it's just her and the Sammy character mm-hmm. and. Goodness gracious, we talked about with the whale that you don't hold it against the kid who plays the missionary that like Sadie Sink dominates him in a scene or something like that. This kid, Gabriel Abel, who I thought was awesome in this movie, is just getting worked by Julia Butters. I mean, if there is anybody that I would be more confident as like a shoe in to be a fucking star yeah. in like four or five years. Even right now, man. It's I mean, Steven Spielberg put you in a movie. And speaking of, and I, I apologize for making that Julia Butters you got discussion. Tar- you got so Tarantino short. and Spielberg being like, "Fuck yeah!" If I had to, uh, if I had to place a bet on somebody to in four or five years, as you just said, be a star. It is. Let me find this kid's name. Uh, Isabel Kussman, the kid from Licorice Pizza, who is the girlfriend of the bully in high school in this movie the friend of sammy's girlfriend you know what i'm talking about i think her i think so the uh the blonde girl is she blonde? I, th- I think she's got a, a blonde but she uh, she's just uh, something in her face and the way that she carries herself just really yeah. gives me um young who did i oh like young kate bosworth I yes, can see her yes, kind of yeah, being... yeah. And like I was even watching the Fablemans, I was waiting for her to have like a bigger role just because she has that look and has that demeanor where you're like, that's that's somebody important. That that's a good way of putting it. She's got like a star's demeanor. So and I look, I've incorrectly heard songs and been like, this will be the song of the summer, and then it's not even released as a, as a single. But like well, it's like when some people like identify an it girl, they're yeah. like, you just don't know, like, you don't know why, but you're drawn to that person. Yeah. She has the it girl factor. Like Emma Stone in uh, Superbad, where you're just like, I feel like we're probably not done with you. Yes, yeah, you know? Yeah. That's that. That's what I thought with this actor and in uh, this character. I also think we're not done with Gabriel Abel. I think that that no. kid I mean, is going to... Uh, Famously, your career usually doesn't die soon after Steven Spielberg is like, yeah, I want you in my movie. 